EOH expects earnings per share and headline earnings per share to be between 25 and 35 percent higher than those in the previous corresponding periods, being 96.4 cents per share and 96.2 cents per share. That's respectively, of course. EOH's interim results are expected to be published on the 14th of March. So here we are in the IT space. We've got consulting, we've got outsourcing. They are now obviously in the limelight given the disappearance of Dimension Data some time ago. Let's start with your thoughts, Byron, on EOH and whether it's something that you back. Yes, I mean, you mentioned DiData and people actually unfairly compare EOH to what DiData was 15 years ago because that's exactly how DiData grew, you know, via acquisition. I think the biggest difference now is that EOH is trading on a valuation of 13 or 14, whereas DiData, you know, was in the 50s and 60s. So when you look at what happened with the tech bu bubble, I think it's completely, you know, overplayed that people are, are, are calling EOH the next um, DiData. There is a lot of concern about about uh, growth uh, via acquisition. And they do mention that um, in their last results, I mean, we don't know this time around because we haven't seen them yet, that 60% of their growth came from organic growth. Um, but there is a lot of potential in the market. And they did mention also that uh, they had 2.5 billion rands in, in revenues last time, where it's a 75 billion rand um, uh, market within the South African economy. So, And they want to go out and grasp that. They want to go out and find the companies that they think are doing um, uh, what they're doing correctly and, 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 and acquire those and carry on growing. So there's still a lot of room for growth. Um, but there are definitely some concerns about how they're going to be able to maintain such growth. Perhaps concerns about how they're going to be able to maintain such growth, but the share price has rallied some 65% over the last 12 months, and that's yeah. not a return to sneeze at. Yeah, no, this has been a phenomenal performance. I remember going to a presentation that Asher Bobart gave a couple of years ago, and uh, the share price is way, way, way below these levels. And even then, people were saying, can this thing keep going? Um, but, you know, as we went through the presentation and we saw the kind of quality of companies that, that they're dealing with, and it took me back to, it must be 10 years ago now, when I went to the first presentation I ever saw in EOH, and, and Asha Bobot made what for me was a very seminal comment. He said, look, um, the world over, uh, the, the, the spend on, on IT is, is way ahead of, ahead of that of, of GDP generally in, in, in most countries in the world. Um, so as a result, even though uh, IT companies have taken a real bath in the wake of the dot-com bubble, the likelihood is that spend was going to carry on being way ahead of, of GDP for the foreseeable future. And if you believed in the company, if you believed in the management, then you know the, 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 the basic fundamentals behind all of that were, were so intact it wasn't true. And I think this, is, this really is, 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 is proof positive of, of, of that, that basic thesis. But let's go back to this valuation. If, if we are at 29 rand 75 and we have run some 65%, how much more room is there realistically in this share price? Well, people are expecting them to grow these revenues year in, year out because they carry on acquiring and a lot of the companies they're buying are, are, are helping out on the revenues. So um, people are expecting that. Um, whether they can carry on finding the right companies to purchase, um, you know, that's the big question. But I, I do agree with Chris. You know, people, uh, uh, companies are looking to innovate and they're looking to become more efficient. And uh, um, EOH is going to be the kind of company that will approach to make their systems more efficient because it's it's extremely competitive in any industry you are and you really have to be on top of your game um, and, and efficiency is uh, you know it's, it's of utmost importance so getting your your um, technology systems correct is, is definitely on the top of everyone's list and EOH are going to be in the forefront of that coming back to the acquisitive growth do you back acquisitive growth over organic growth specifically for an IT company no look it's, it's nice to have that organic growth I mean that that's a more uh, sustainable type of type of model obviously and as Byron says, it's, it's more difficult to find the, the good acquisitions these days. Um, but these guys have been remarkably adept at, at spotting them over the years. And, and why that should change, I don't know. Other than the, the fact that they, there are fewer of them on the ground. Hot or not? This one's hot. Now look, um, I, I'm going out on a bit of a limb on this one because you look at that share price graph and it just goes through the roof. But having said that, I, I, I agree with, with, with Byron here that I think uh, the market does expect that kind of growth and they haven't disappointed in the past 10, 15 years. Byron, hot or not? Yeah, I like back, backing management teams that have done well in the past. Um, 
I, I, I call them hot also on the South African market just because of lack of other options. Um, you know, we, we invest in New York as well. And we, we'd prefer to go to the likes of Cisco or Ibiza. Um, and those are co uh, co companies that are grasping the Chinese and, and um, those big uh, juggernauts out there. Um, and they've been beaten down from a valuation perspective. Yeah, they've mm -hmm. come down. I mean, Cisco uh, was one of those companies that had a market cap of over half a trillion that Apple has just breached now. So, um, yes, they have pulled back a lot but there's still a lot of potential going forward. Um, but I am, I am hot on your edge.